So this week I set you a challenge problem, which was to prove that the straight line is the shortest path between two points in the plane. And to help you along with this problem, I wanted to tell you a little bit about paths in the plane. So what is a path in the plane? It's a map from an interval a, b to the plane r2. So gamma of a is the start point, gamma of b is the end point, and if t is the coordinate on this interval, then gamma of t is the point that sort of moves along this path. So gamma of t has two coordinates, gamma 1 of t, gamma 2 of t. So we can actually think of this function, or of this, this map from the interval to the plane, as a pair of functions, gamma 1, gamma 2, each sending the interval just to the real line. So we need to require something of these functions because we don't want our path to jump around in a discontinuous way. So we need them to be continuous functions, which I'll just write CTS. And we actually want a little bit more because we want to be able to draw tangent vectors. Um, like this. And to do this we need them to be differentiable. as well as being continuous. And the reason for that is this vector, which I'm going to call gamma dot at t, dot means time differentiation, has two components, one of which is gamma 1 dot at t, and one of which is gamma 2 dot at t. So in other words, we need the, the component functions of gamma to be differentiable. And we want them to be continuously differentiable because we don't want the tangent vector to be jumping around. So let me write continuously differentiable. Anyway, that's what we need from our paths. Um, how does this help us approach the challenge problem? We need to be able to talk about the length of paths. Um, and the length of a path is given by the following integral from a to b of gamma dot 1 squared at t plus gamma dot 2 squared at t all square rooted dt. And the way to see this is to split your interval up into n equal chunks. Um, n pieces. Each length, each chunk has length b minus a over n, b minus a being the length of the whole interval. So that will go to some decomposition of the path into segments. And each segment we're going to approximate by a tangent line. So at the point gamma of, well, this one is 2 times b minus a over n. In general, it will be gamma of k times b minus a over n, where k equals 0 up to n minus 1. Um, we take the tangent line gamma dot at this 2 times b minus a over n, or more generally k, so let's, let's start writing k instead of 2. Um, and we move along it for time b minus a over n. So in other words, we approximate this segment by this vector, and we approximate its length by the length of this vector. So in total, the, the approximate length of the curve is, is just this. Gamma dot at k of b minus a over n 
norm squared, well, let's get rid of the squared, just the length of that vector times b minus a over n, summed from k equals 0 to k equals n minus 1. But this, by Pythagoras' theorem, is just the square root of the sum of the squares of the components, that is, it's the sum gamma 1 dot squared plus gamma 2 dot squared, evaluated at the relevant point, so it's b minus a over n. And as n goes to infinity, this sum tends to this integral. Okay, let me give you an example. The example is going to be very simple curve, gamma of t equals cos t sine t, and almost by definition of cos and sine, this curve is going to be a circle. Because at the point t, so t is this angle now, um, gamma 1 is this length here, which is cos of t, and gamma 2 is, is this length, this vertical length here, which is gamma 2, this is sine of t. This is how we actually define cos and sine, usually. So what's gamma dot? Well, it's a tangent vector, it's going to look something like this. So we go around the circle. Just differentiating, we get sine of t, cos of t. And you can see this gives the right answer because say at t equals pi over 2, so 90 degrees, um, sine of pi over 2 is 1, cos of pi over 2 is 0, so gamma dot at pi over 2 radians is minus 1, 0, which is exactly this horizontal vector pointing backwards along the circle. So you should always think of this circle as going anti-clockwise. Okay, and what's the length of gamma t, gamma dot t? Well, it's just 1. It's sine squared plus cos squared. So that implies that the length of this circle is just the integral between 0 and 2 pi, because t goes from 0 to 2 pi, of 1 dt. So that is precisely 2 pi, which is indeed the length or circumference of this circle of radius 1. Okay, so now we know how to talk about length of paths. I hope you'll be slightly better to, equipped to approach the challenge problem. So good luck with that.